own selfish reasons, you want to maintain that relationship of going in with her and playing with her and cuddling with her and all that stuff, but that's not what's best for her. You know she's not your baby forever. You know that you're helping her through this stage and you want to get her back with, with the rest of her family. And in the early days, we were a little bit pessimistic. I never really felt like Fiona wouldn't necessarily want to be with the hippos, but I was worried Phoebe or Henry wouldn't accept her. Especially for hippos, they, they say their imprinting period is roughly 10 to 12 days after birth. So those first 10 to 12 days, that's when mother and baby are isolated away from the group and they form that really important bond. They learn each other's smell. Um, and Fiona and Bibi didn't get to have that together. So even still to this day, I, we don't know whether Bibi recognizes that Fiona is her baby so much. We, we know she realizes that it's a baby and she has to interact with it a certain way and take care of it and look out for it. Um, we can't say, but yeah, there was concern that like, we aren't hippos and no matter how much we try, we can't compare, we can't be any version of that to her. Um, but then once we had Fiona on the same level with BB and just the mesh between them, um, BB was very interested in her and would spend a lot of time trying to lay as close to her as possible. The intros went so well. Just letting them have the howdy set up where they could put their noses together and seeing how they reacted. Um, towards each other made me have some sort of calm confidence uh, that it would, would be okay. And then that just kept getting better and better and as we removed more of the barriers and let them interact with each other and touch nose to nose. When we saw that Bibi and Fiona were doing well together, we were like, all right, let's keep that going as much as we can. We felt confident that we could open the door between the two of them and know that Bibi would not intentionally try to hurt Fiona. So we were responsible. We made sure that everything we could tell from BB was all positive. The scariest one by far was introducing Fiona and BB. That was the scariest day of my life. Definitely it's in your mind when you introduce her to her mom who can fit her in her mouth. Like, oh God, I hope nothing happens because the whole world loves her and will be very angry with us. It was just so difficult to open the doors and then just hope and trust that BB was going to behave appropriately and recognize that it's a baby and be gentle with her. When you finally open that door between two hippos, you have no control. BB's 3,300 pounds, Fiona's around 200 pounds, so if she wanted to hurt her, there wasn't a whole lot we could do about it. We had taught Fiona how to use creeps or like little escape routes, so we'd open the door part way so that Fiona could squeeze through but BB couldn't. Everything looks good, and this went on for weeks. Let's try it today. BB had all the right reactions to Fiona, and most impressively, something that I still can't get over is how well Fiona read hippo behavior. Like, she was raised by humans, and she knew exactly how to behave around BB. It was shockingly positive, because a lot of times, if you're hand raising an animal, you don't know if they know how to be in her case, a hippo. The moment BB moved quickly towards her, Fiona just sat down and turned her back to her, which is a submissive behavior that any hippo calf would do. And I, I knew at that moment that everything was going to be fine with that. It's like, okay, my little kid's grown up now. Like she doesn't need me anymore. She's got, she's got BB. Fiona was getting big enough that it was actually becoming dangerous for keeper staff to spend time with her. And if you look at the natural history of a baby hippo, they don't spend any portion of the first year of their life alone. So our greatest fear was that we don't want her to be too dangerous for people to be with her, but not yet integrated in with the adults. The mouth is such an important part of hippos. I mean, it's how they explore their world. It's how they fight. It's 90% of their interactions with each other. So the first time we saw BB opening her mouth really, really wide and Fiona just Having no care in the world, sticking her entire head in, that was really terrifying. So to them, it probably felt like the most natural thing in the world and nothing to worry about, but for us, it looked so scary. It looked scary, but then when you go and look at the adult hippos and how they were positioning themselves, it was like, okay, they're okay with it. As long as they stay okay with it, then we're good. Yeah, that was a heart in the throat moment, watching, <laughs> watching BB lay there with her giant mouth open with all of her teeth and her tusks and watching Fiona go exploring and literally go in like shoulder deep into Bibi's mouth. At one point she had like her entire front half of her body in Bibi's mouth. It's like all they have to do is bite down. If, if they wanted to hurt her, they could and 
That was terrifying. Everything went so well inside. It almost felt like, oh, the more space they have, the more, you know, water they have, everything, it can only be safer. <laughs> Releasing control and just stepping back and crossing our fingers and letting them go out there, which is much different than introducing them inside, because inside we have doors and different access where we can always kind of get a hold of Fiona if we needed to. What if something does happen and we cannot get to Fiona because BB is dangerous? We can't go share the same space with BB. Once she's out in the yard, she's out in the yard. We can't get her, we can't go out there, um, and we can't control if her or BB comes in or what they do. BB went out first and was in the deep end of the pool, and then Fiona came out. And Fiona has been out in the um, in the outdoor pool plenty of times. She knew how to navigate the whole thing. She went blazing in like she always did. And she, up until that point, she'd only ever been in there with humans. And then she got to the deep end, and there's 3,300-pound BB sitting at the bottom. And she was just like, oh, no! And she spun around, and I've never seen her move faster. I mean, she got out of that pool as quick as she could, ran back to the safe place. And BB kind of, like, chases after her. It felt like BB understood that like that interaction went poorly and then BB would lay in the shallow water and like try to coax and encourage Fiona to come in. We were very confident in everything we'd seen between the two of them that they were gonna do just fine. It's like she was again like trying to encourage her like no 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 this is we're hippos we go in the pool and you can come in here with me it's all good. We realized what the problem was was that BB didn't know Fiona knew how to navigate deep water. We don't, know, we don't know that it was like a motherly instinct, but just, hey, this is a baby hippo. She can't handle this deep water. She kept trying to keep her in the shallow end. I know she came from St. Louis where she was with just three other females, but where she was previously to that, um, you know, she was in a whole bloat with an adult male and calves, so she's been around a lot of different hippos. Once BB saw that Fiona could navigate the water on her own, um, she backed off to. It was like a proud moment when she started to live with BB. Seeing her so comfortable and happy, spending time with her mom and doing hippo stuff is kind of the reward for us. And then with Henry, we tried to repeat the process, the same process, like let them have nose to nose howdy and contact. All right, let them go in together. And for BB and Fiona, it was instant and happened so easily, but for Henry, and Fiona, it was very different. Henry, oddly enough, was just not a fan of hers. He was probably the only creature in the world that didn't like her. You add a male hippo into the picture, and that's a whole different ball game. Um, and that he wasn't thrilled, you know, made us take pause. That's it's a little scary. But we knew that Henry knew what to do. Henry has had calves before, and he was fine around them. So we knew he could be good with her, so we kind of took a blind leap of faith, our last big blind leap of faith, and decided that what was making him unhappy was the smaller area inside, being in really close quarters with Fiona. Um, and so we just decided to put the whole family outside and believe in BB being BB and taking care of Fiona and putting Henry in his place, which she does readily before and after Fiona's existence. Um, and we just let the whole family out together. Like, I think if we put them out on exhibit, they have enough space, and if all three of them are together, BB will kind of run the show. Because we saw how bonded BB and Fiona became, and you know, even if BB doesn't see her as her own daughter, she seemed to recognize that she was smaller, and you know, a female hippo or a mother hippo would protect their baby, and. I mean, we saw that immediately. So we got out there and BB made it really apparent, like, all right, I'm going to be the referee and the coach. I'm going to make sure that everyone's playing by the rules. And I'm going to help each of you and demonstrate for you. It couldn't have really necessarily gone any better. And it took Henry, I think, two or three days before he finally kind of relaxed and let his guard down. Um, and he even spent one day, 10 minutes with his mouth wide open, letting Fiona investigate. Um, that was... The, one of the best days because I was like, okay, they're not only are they okay together, they seem like they could be happy together. Henry has got to be the world's best dad. It's like you got your kid over there chewing on your lip, pulling everything, and he's just sitting there, and I'm like, she, she's got teeth. That hurts. <laughs> and he just puts up with it. And then they, you know, were just exactly what you would expect, a natural little hippo family after that. 
first time I took a nap was was fun. That that was a big day. That was an exciting day. The first time seeing all three of them calm and comfortable together on exhibit, just acting just like a normal bloat would. Um, they're nocturnal animals, so they spend a good portion of the daytime sleeping. That was a big thing because they're finally, that's like a unity. They're, that's a big family thing. So getting to a place where they kind of had all finally learned the rules and gotten comfortable with each other and comfortable enough to let their guard down and close their eyes and relax together, that was a big, big day. That was really exciting because it was like, oh, I just breathe a sigh of relief, like, yay, they're acting just like a normal little family of hippos would now. That's exactly what we wanted. And hopefully some of the little things that we did, like keeping her in the hippo building so that she was constantly hearing the adults. She couldn't necessarily see them at first, but hearing them as she was, I mean, from the day she was born. Um, hopefully some of those little things kept it in her mind that those weren't big, scary things. I mean, I think that's the most impressive thing, is that, you know, she, for however many months, was not near other hippos, could hear them, but couldn't see them. You know, we were so hands-on, because we had to be, that she still retained that instinct and that basic knowledge that she would need to survive and to be a hippo. Fortunately, because Fiona is as smart as she is and she pays attention and she reads the body language and responds appropriately, she had no trouble fitting right in with them. Um, which is a huge relief because, yeah, at the end of the day, that's all we ever wanted was for her to have happy, healthy, normal life with other hippos.